Hey guys, Rachel Cook, Doctor of Audiology at Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in today's video, I'm gonna be telling you how your genetics might actually guarantee that you'll develop tinnitus. Coming up. Nearly 740 million adults across the globe have tinnitus, a ringing, buzzing, or humming sound that isn't actually present in your environment. Tinnitus is perceived differently by each person, but can range from barely noticeable to, in rare cases, significantly distressing. In the past, the predictors of whether or not you would develop tinnitus were based on the known causes of tinnitus itself, including head and neck injuries, TMJ disorder, certain ototoxic medications, sleep and stress disorders, lifestyle factors like smoking and drinking, and finally, the most common cause, hearing loss. Research studies suggest that nearly 80% of individuals with tinnitus have some level of hearing loss. No matter if this hearing loss was inherited before birth or acquired from medical conditions, injuries, or loud noise exposure, the association between tinnitus and hearing loss is undeniable. But just why does this happen? Researchers theorize that tinnitus caused by hearing loss is due to two main factors, cochlear damage and auditory deprivation. The cochlea, your hearing organ, is filled with thousands of sensory cells, called hair cells, designed to boost and decode sound vibrations before sending the information along the auditory nerve and up to the brain for processing. Just some examples of how these hair cells can be damaged include genetic and acquired medical conditions, ototoxic medications, and brief or long-term exposure to loud noise. This damage impacts the function of these hair cells and limits the amount of sound information making its way up to the brain, aka hearing loss. The result of your brain no longer receiving the anticipated amount of sound information is called auditory deprivation. Researchers hypothesize that the brain may be trying to compensate for the missing external sounds by generating its own internal signals like tinnitus. This theory explains why many individuals who have both hearing loss and tinnitus report that the pitch of their tinnitus sounds nearly identical to the frequency where they have the most hearing loss. In most cases, returning the missing sound information, oftentimes through the use of well-programmed hearing aids, can return enough sound to the brain to reduce tinnitus perception. But what about those who have tinnitus but do not actually have a hearing loss? What then could be the cause behind their tinnitus? But before we jump into the exciting research and results, please take a moment to give this video a thumbs up to bring videos like these to a wider audience. And while you're at it, take a quick moment to hit that subscribe button with notification bell so that you never miss any one of our newly released videos. Aside from hearing loss, Tinnitus has been linked to nerve inflammation from injuries and conditions affecting the head, neck, and jaw. It has also been associated with medical conditions that can affect the ears, such as diabetes, heart disease, and kidney disorders. But did you know that genetics may play a much bigger role in tinnitus than we previously thought? In fact, a new research study published earlier this year suggests that tinnitus might very well be in your DNA. The first pieces of evidence that tinnitus may just have a genetic component were studies published between 2017 and 2019 that showed heritability of tinnitus to be between 31 and 43 percent. Then, a 2020 study out of the UK found eight locations within a genome that corresponded with tinnitus perception, but also with hearing difficulty. Without separating the two, it was difficult to say whether tinnitus itself could actually be genetic or if it was always tied to hearing. But the results of a brand new study published just last month in January of 2024 gave us more results than we bargained for. This study expanded on the previous research, but with nearly three times the sample size and with more diverse ancestry by including over 500,000 U.S. veterans from the Million Veteran Program. This national research program looks at how genes, lifestyle, military experiences, and exposures affect health and wellness in veterans. Researchers evaluated the DNA from this large group of people searching for teeny tiny variations that could suggest certain diseases or disorders. What they found were 28 locations within our genetic coding that corresponded with tinnitus perception. But instead of these areas having an association with hearing loss, 
these areas had an association with synaptic function. Synapses are responsible for the transfer of information between neurons, specialized cells that receive, process, and transmit information throughout the body and the brain. Neurons create intricate networks of information transfer that are essentially directed by the traffic control of synapses. The neurotransmitters within synapses control the speed and intensity of many sensory signals making their way to the brain including hearing. One key neurotransmitter is GABA, which helps to slow down sensory signals and make sure that nerves aren't firing out of turn. In this study, gene GRK6 was associated with reduced levels of GABA, meaning that information jumping from between neurons could be happening too fast or too often. Without any GABA to pump the brakes on the sensory signals coming from the auditory nerve, tinnitus perception could certainly be triggered or increased. The GRK6 gene was also associated with dopamine. This neurotransmitter is also critical to balance neural networks, especially as it relates to stop and go signals. This research will be incredibly important when it comes to finding a potential pharmaceutical treatment that can help to reduce bothersome tinnitus. But in addition to finding this genetic association between unbalanced nerve activity and tinnitus, the study also supported the theory that tinnitus and hearing loss are not always associated. Looking at the genetic code, researchers found 95% of the predicted variations for hearing loss were also found with tinnitus, with only 200 variations being unique to hearing loss alone. Conversely, over 5,600 genetic variations thought to be associated with tinnitus were found to be unique to tinnitus alone. They also found that these genetic variations occurred over a much more broad location in the brain than just the cochlea or the auditory cortex. This could help to explain why, for certain people, tinnitus seems to change in pitch and level, especially with variations in sleep and stress levels. Researchers even found an association between tinnitus and psychiatric conditions and traits, which further supports the idea that tinnitus can be impacted by brain health overall. So what does this new research mean for you? Does it mean that you're guaranteed to have tinnitus? The answer? Perhaps. If tinnitus truly has a genetic location, that would explain why you could not have hearing loss or not have loud noise exposure and still experience tinnitus. But that also doesn't mean that just because you have the genetic markers for tinnitus, that inheriting it is a sure thing. We aren't exactly sure the relationship between these genetic markers and their heritability, but the results of this research is still incredibly important. Because while we don't yet have medications specifically designed to decrease tinnitus perception, locating areas in our genetic makeup that could be contributing to the problem is a great place to start. With more information about which genes are associated with tinnitus and just how they are responsible for information transfer in the brain, it's only a matter of time before treatment therapies can be targeted at reducing the perception and disturbance of tinnitus. But even if you were destined to have tinnitus, be it by nature or nurture, you can rest easy knowing that more and more tinnitus treatment options become available all the time. Now, a comprehensive hearing evaluation will first reveal if your tinnitus is due to something treatable, like impacted earwax or a middle ear infection. Several tests will then determine if there is a hearing loss and whether it can be treated through medical intervention or better managed through hearing aids. About 70% of individuals who have tinnitus and hearing loss see a significant reduction in their tinnitus perception using hearing aids alone which you can learn more about in my video linked in the description below. For many individuals, tinnitus is best managed by using sound therapy, either through environmental sources or through hearing aids, and you can learn more about effective sound therapy options in my other video that I'll also have linked in the description below. All tinnitus patients, but especially those with anything above a mild level of disturbance, should consider counseling programs, such as tinnitus retraining therapy, progressive tinnitus management, or even cognitive behavioral therapy. Promising results have even been secured from recent clinical applications of bimodal neuromodulation through devices like Lanier that uses both sound and tongue tip electrical stimulation to reduce bothersome tinnitus. So make sure you check out those videos too. The effectiveness of tinnitus treatment really relies on finding a hearing healthcare provider who is committed to following a comprehensive tinnitus approach, so make sure you do your research. And a special thanks to Carl Strom, who wrote the incredible article that inspired this video, which you can read for yourself over at hearingtracker.com.